Hello everyone, my name is Maria Tico and I'm going to be going over the symbolism and imagery of gender inequality in Federico Garcia Lorca's La Casa de Fernanda Alba. Specifically, my argument is how Federico Garcia Lorca uses the color white and the concept of time to represent the gender inequality that prevailed in Spain during the first decades of the 20th century in La Casa de Bernarda Alba. I want to give a content warning. There is suicide involved in this play. Um, now that I, that said, let's get started. Um, in La Casa de Bernarda Alba, which translates to the house of Bernarda Alba, is centered on an overbearing woman named Bernarda who keeps her five grown unmarried daughters, um, Angustias, Magdalena, Amelia, Martirio, and Adela. You can see their ages next to their name. Who are forced to remain in an eight year mourning due to Bernarda's second husband dying. Um, Maria Josefa, Bernarda's mother, spends the majority of her life locked away due to Bernarda's control. And in the village, there is a handsome young suitor named Pepe el Romano. Um, he has no dial in the play. There's no dialogue in the play of a man, but it is centered around men. Um, so he enters this intense atmosphere and it's aims at proposing to Angustias, who is um, the eldest daughter of Bernarda and who has the rich inheritance from Bernarda's first husband. So Pepe embarks an illicit and secret affair with Adela. She is the youngest, the most passionately rebellious daughter of all of them. Then we have Emilia, who is the gossip daughter, Mandalena, who is the crier, and of course, Martirio, who made forever bitter from her own sabotage romance years before, exposes Adela's transgressions in the house. And this brings down Bernarda's full wrath upon them all. At the end of the play, Pepe flees, to the flees the house at gunpoint. Through he escapes unharmed. Adela believes that he is dead and she goes to her room and hangs herself, unfortunately. The play ends with Bernarda raving that her daughter died virtuous and a virgin, which turns out to be a lie because she was having an affair with Pepe, even as she repeatedly forbids any of the others to leave for the loss of their sister. This also takes place in Andalusian village in Southern Spain in 1936. So to start off with the color white, we have Bernarda, cleanliness and the bridal sheets. These are all symbolisms of the color white. So let's start off with Bernarda. We don't typically hear Bernarda as a name very common. We do hear Bernardo, so that can be an indication of a masculine name, kind of put it into the perspective that she is the masculine character and has that control. Um, Alba in Latin means white. Um, so that's something how it correlates to that color. Um, Alba also in English translates to dawn, which comes from the early dawn light is cold and lacking warmth from the sun that has not yisen, risen, sorry. But Nada is cold and unmoved by the problems of others. So she acts like a man, she has the control of a man, um, doesn't care about the feelings, is empathetic towards her daughters. And this kind of puts into perspective of how men treated women at this time. Um, they have the decisions that go around the house and the women don't have a say in anything. Now we're gonna go to cleanliness. So at the end of the second act, the commotion breaks out in the streets that an unmarried woman is being dragged by an angry crowd after killing her unborn child. The woman does not know who the father is. And this is a big crime. Not only did she kill her baby, but she doesn't know who the father is. Seeing that she had multiple relationships with men, which was not allowed for women, but again, was allowed for men. Um, having that clean reputation is incredibly crucial for a woman. Um, if she does anything wrong, they could potentially lead to her getting killed. Um, Adela in this moment is horrified to hear her mother say, kill her because she is committing a crime right now by having an affair with Pepe Romano. Um, at this time in Spain, women could not vote, get divorced, get an abortion or have a job and adultery at any time at any time. So this again, with his very crucial reputation. And also in the beginning of act one, the maids, La Poncia and Griada, um, talk about the house and the reputation of Bernarda. So asiada, limpia, barnizada, and blanqueada. You can see the definitions next to the word, neat, clean, 
varnished whiten. It's just completely clean, nothing to be said about her. So in this case, La Poncia says, y para ocultar su vergüenza lo mató, which translates to, and to hide her shame, she killed it. Talking about the woman who killed her unborn child. She should be ashamed and she should be killed for it. And again, that this just shows the inequality that goes towards women. So now we have the bridal sheets. So Angustias is getting married and the sisters in the second act are making her bridal sheets. And again, instead of having that sexual fulfillment of that symbolizes the bridal sheets, it goes to sexual frustration. And she ends up saying, Afortunadamente pronto voy a salir de este infierno, which translates to, fortunately, I will soon get out of this hell, saying that the others get to stay there while she gets to finally leave and ex has the expectation on marriage that they should be married to be able to get out. So now for the concept of time, we will be talking about the beauty, the church bells, and the eight years of mourning. Starting off with beauty, youthfulness, and the looks of a woman um, is something that's still like a problem to this day. Beauty is, has such a standard. So since Pepe Romano is having an affair with Adela, but is marrying Angustias for her rich inheritance, you know, he won't get in trouble for that while Adela would and is portraying Angustias. But again, having that inheritance is very important. Also, Renata kind of arranged this marriage, which was also very common during this time. It didn't matter the connection of the person. It just, just had to look at, do they have inheritance? Do they have money? Um, you know, the man can be unfaithful, but the woman can't. And put it in martirio into this, um, see the definition of her name, you would think that, you know, why can't she go? Because she is not the most beautiful. She describes herself as ugly and weak. She is afraid of men. And she's also in love with Pepe Romano. And she's accepted her faith that she's never going to get out. And so she does everything in her power to get rid of Adela's relationship with him. And so that shows that she's just giving up and it's really sad. So the church bells, these are the occurrences. So for the deaths, the sound of the church bells reflect the power of the church and also adding that those are the only sounds that can pass through the walls of Bernarda's home. And so it's suggesting that the amount of power and control the church has to exert its influence over society and social order. Again, having that power, having the control to tell women that if you're pure, you are more desirable than if you're not, even though if men are not, then, well, again, it doesn't matter. And now for Los Campanillos, this is the big indicator of women uh, with gender inequality in La Casa de Bernada Alba. It indicates the bells that go off when the men go off to work. It's kind of signifying that they get to go out while women stay home and do domestic work. Um, again, they just symbolize freedom. And for the women, the only way to get out is to get married, is to have a man to get out. So that is a huge indicator and in which leads us to the eight years of mourning, which causes them frustration and hatred. Um, during these years, the girls are supposed to be doing needlework and it creates a problem since they're not allowed to go outside or associate with any affairs. The only man, according to Bernardo, that they're allowed to look at is the priest. Um, shows, again, the control of the church and she's restricting the rhythm, freedom and individuality. Um, Maria Josefa, who is the mother of Bernarda, kind of reflects all of this. You can see her going a little bit insane and wanting to go out to get married and bear children and isn't able to. And so she is the one that symbolizes the fate um, of the rest of the daughters in the house. Bernarda says, when they're in the eight years of mourning, en ocho años que duré en el luto, no ha de entrar en esta casa el viento de la calle. Hacemos cuenta que hemos tapiado los, con ladridos uh, puertas y ventanas, which translates to, through the eight years of mourning, not a breach shall enter this house. Consider the doors and windows as sealed with bricks. That can show the control that Bernarda or men in society had over women. So to a conclusion, gender inequality in the Casa de Bernarda Alba, we go through the reputation that women are expected, the gossip that can cause that reputation, the desired inheritance and beauty, the expectations of women of being married, having babies, not being able to have a job, get divorced and vote and things like that. Still also in the power of the church, having a big religion is such a big aspect in this too. And this all causes the restriction of freedom and individuality. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Let's move on to the questions.